Okay, I've been kind of holding off on this review because Cold Heart is a weird one. And and with all weird things, I just don't know how to talk about it. Or, or better yet, I just don't know how to break it down. So I actually got a, a complete write up on this because this is the only way I know how to collect all my thoughts on this weapon. Now, shout out to Savage for letting me use his masterwork, Cold Heart. He is the one that did all the work. I'll put in the comments below how he got this weapon, what he had to do to unlock it completely. So again, look at the pinned comment down below if you want to see exactly how to get this masterwork, Cold Heart. With that being said though, let's talk about the weapon, its pros, its cons, the loadouts that I was using with it, and whether or not this is an optimal choice to use in Crucible. So first off guys, let's talk about the loadouts that I use with Cold Heart. So I'm using a Foe Tracer on Hunter, I'm also using Ophidian Aspects on a Warlock, and Lion Rampants on a Titan. Yes, guys, I, I hardly do this, so normally when I do a review, I just get gameplay of the weapon and just get it out. Right now though, I, I was truly interested in this being a true blown meta weapon and given the right circumstances it can always aid the gun even more now foe tracer deals more damage to low health guardians so uh again that works really well with high rate of fire weapons not necessarily high impact weapons uh high impact weapons can't take advantage of it because that that low health is literally on the tail end of their of their health i mean it's mainly there to allow you to put guardians down with more forgiveness versus a faster ttk you miss a couple crits don't worry about it you'll be able to pick it up on the tail end with that extra damage now lion rampant i used it because it does have in air accuracy when firing from the hip and uh hip fire i was i was trying to hit fire a little more with it but a lot of times I don't just constantly hit fire. Of course, you, you don't want to just sit there and just be hip firing here on console. You want to go from your hip down to your sights. I'll say that it was a little jumpy for me. And also we'll talk a little more about its zoom when going from hip down to your sights. Uh, it throws you off your target. And we'll get into that when we talk about the pros and cons of the weapon. Uh, but I felt just overall being a trace rifle, it was just better for me to just stay on the ground. So Lion Rampant was not necessarily a great choice for me. Ophidian Aspects was also not a huge improvement. I was hoping that going in and out of my sight was, was gonna be the thing that was gonna make this weapon better at grabbing targets at a distance. You know, kind of spamming that ADS uh, and but it just didn't work because the zoom increase from from aiming down sights from the hip is so significant that it literally just throws you off target. I don't like the animation, guys. It's it's weird, and I have no way to explain it other than me just saying it's weird. So outside of quick draw, this didn't really help the weapon overall. Okay, guys. So let's talk about the pros real quick of the weapon because there is some pros for sure. It's got a fast TTK that relies on you staying on target. It's easy to use. I mean, most trace rifles are pretty easy to use, guys. I mean, you just have to just hold down the trigger and keep melting targets, keep staying on target. Uh, Longest Winter got reworked here recently, which is the trade on the gun, and it activates quicker. It deals more damage the longer you stay on target, and it activates quicker now, so that's a huge plus. Uh, it's got decent hip fire accuracy, despite the zoom factor being uh, a little wonky from your hip to your sights. I found that just staying in hip fire at times, when, especially when I was playing line rampant, it was okay. I, I felt that it was pretty decent uh, from the hip, which most trace rifles, you know, Prometheus Lens also fires pretty well from the hip. And also you have a blur effect when you're critting targets. You're hitting people in the face, you will blur them a little bit and mess with them. And a lot of uh, Guardians don't know how to react to that. Now the cons of the weapon. Wrist Runner is Cold Hearts, Kryptonite, and it is bad, dude. Like every time I went against someone that was using a Wrist Runner, I was automatically at a huge disadvantage because of Arc Conductor. Now Arc Conductor resists arc damage but it's amped up even more when going up against cold heart like i was hitting sixes and sevens on on people using wrist runner on top of that i felt that longest winter the trait on cold heart didn't even activate when going up against people using wrist runner so just understand that when you go up against wrist runners using a cold heart you're at a huge disadvantage the second con guys target acquisition at distances is bad this might not be an issue on pc uh, for PS4 for console. I just felt that target acquisition at a distance is really bad. I think some of it has to do with the the reticle itself. You know, not actually being a scope. You know, zoom we've talked about in the past. There is a level of zoom that's thrown on in this gun, but it feels sloppy. Uh, and so I, I felt that if it was just a scope, an actual scope on the gun, I would do much better at a distance. Now, granted. That's what we need to get into the third con. The weapon's optimal TTK is reliant on shots staying on target. 
So things like peak shooting, vertical fights, or anything that makes your finger let off the trigger drops your TTK significantly. So long as winter, it's like the only thing that's keeping cold heart in the ball game. Not that cold heart can't get kills that long as winter, but that's what you want to activate every gunfight. That's going to be a huge deciding factor in whether or not you win. The issue with that is if you have a good player in front of you that peak shoots you, plays a hand cannon, just peeks out a little bit, and you can never get Longest Winter to truly activate, that's a problem. You want enemies to square up with you so you can activate that trait. Our fourth con, God dog it, man. I feel like I got so many cons on this, but I'm just being super critical right now, guys. It handles flinch poorly. Uh, it just does, you know. So if you cannot land consecutive shots, you'll never be able to take advantage of Longest Winter. And so if the gun handles flinch poorly, there will be times that you veer off target. And if you veer off target, you can interrupt longest winter trait from activating now the final con to this weapon is the animation from hip fire to aiming down sight to sloppy i've mentioned that the zoom boost can actually throw your aim off um this is just something more or less catered to me i felt that was the case when going from my hip to aiming down sights normally when i play with any weapon going from hip to sights actually helps me in target acquisition and actually aids me and, and actually landing on the target. A lot of times when I mess with the hand cannon, yes, I'll aim down sights, but a lot of times going from my hip back to my sights, it'll reallocate that target again for me. Uh, it's really nice on console. Again, this is mainly catered to console, but I felt that the animation overall on Cold Heart did not work in the same way that it works with so many of our other weapons, and so I just didn't really like it. I felt there was some gunfights I almost lost just purely off the zoom boost and, and the animation from hip to ADS, and it just felt strange. It felt different. Maybe with a little more time, which I did put a lot of time into this, but maybe with a little more time, that, uh, that animation I would get a little more used to. So my overall thoughts on the gun, guys. I think Cold Heart is actually a good weapon. And I also think it has a very high skill ceiling. Again, this weapon, if you can constantly put yourself where people are squaring up in front of you, if you're constantly staying on target to take advantage of Longest Winter, these are the things that will ensure you winning every 1v1 fight. Um, there was a lot of times that I felt that this gun would melt people faster than anything I've seen in the game. I mean, it would be so instant. But again, it's completely reliant on your awareness, how well you situate your enemies around the map, and keeping your feet planted. I just felt that being super mobile, I mean, it helped to get to where you need to get to to start shooting a target, but, but moving a whole bunch, like you just don't want to do that too terribly much when using this weapon. It's almost like the weekend when Prometheus Lens came out. Like Prometheus Lens was super deadly when it came out, but if you remember your play style that weekend, for me specifically, I didn't move that much. Like I just got to where I need and then I just planted my feet in the ground and melted people. Now Goldheart is not on that level of deadliness, uh, but with Longest Winter, it can be deadly for you. And so be prepared to plant your feet on the ground a little more than you're probably used to. As far as loadouts goes, guys, I, I felt that Foe Tracer was nice. Uh, but again, man, like Foe Tracer is good, but I just, I really didn't need it. Like it wasn't even needed. The main thing to this weapon is just activating that Longest Winter perk. As long as you can remain on target, Foe Tracer really isn't going to be something that's going to jump up and help you. I didn't hit any crazy numbers with Foe Tracer, and I felt there was something strange about it. Because normally with Foe Tracer, I've hit some crazy numbers on that tail end of damage. And uh, Foe Tracer, right now, just using it, I felt like I just wasn't necessarily hitting any numbers that could justify me using it. And again, I've seen some big numbers from Foe Tracer, uh, but just not here with, with Cold Heart. So uh, maybe there, there's some stuff bugged there, you know, maybe it's just such a, a low impact weapon that you just can't really take advantage of it and just be little incremental ones and twos being thrown in there as extra bit of damage on that tail end. Uh, but I think there would be some other exotics that would be better here. Again, the thing that's going to aid you the most with this weapon, hitting crits, hitting crits and staying on crits and constantly taking advantage of the longest winter trait. Well, guys, that's my thoughts on Cold Heart. I know this one dragged out, dude. I, I literally have been sitting on this review, though, since Friday morning. And I had to keep going back in there and trying different stuff because I just 
I just felt uncomfortable. I actually had the whole video ready to upload yesterday and I scratched it and we redid the commentary right now because I just didn't feel comfortable where I was sitting at with Cold Heart. I had to try it at least one more time with a different loadout and that was the Faux Tracer loadout I wanted to try it with because I just wanted to see how it affected it. But overall, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, man, definitely hit that thumbs up, guys. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.